My name is Walid Mehanna. I am from Daimler AG, um, from Stuttgart, Germany. And I have the pleasure to, um, yeah, do the first keynote today. So, um, I'm here to give you a few personal insights from an ongoing journey, how we are trying to establish a data and analytics function in our company. And um, Mercedes-Benz, you might know, uh, we, do we make cars, we make uh, nice cars, we make large cars, and what I've learned also, we are recently in the superhero business, so um, yeah, we are equipping also Superman and Wonder Woman with cars, but also, of course, every one of you who is interested. Um, as for my responsibility, data and analytics, when people talk to me or ask me what is our, let's say, our focus, what is our general purpose in terms of what we try to bring to the party. Um, my background is in computer science and I'm a technology geek for 20 years, so I'm always very into everything new, everything changing and everything interesting and fancy and blinking coming onto the market. But at the end of the day, that's not what my bosses are interested in. So we have the whole topic of data, meaning how much data we have and how much more data we will have in the future. We have the whole topic of AI, machine learning, algorithms, deep learning, and so on. So that is always also very interesting things that people need, can delve into, that can do PhDs on and can talk about all day long. And of course, we also have always the new technologies, co distributed computing, in-memory technologies, new products, uh, the companies like SAP and Oracle and the likes are selling. Very interesting, very helpful. But at the end of the day, only the combination of that and also with our specific business domain, my personal responsibility finance that is, brings us to the place where we can bring value to the organization. And that is the reason why I put this slide always up front also for my own team in terms of always remember, we are currently in my department, my responsibility is a cost center, but uh, we, there's always cycles and uh, somewhere in two to four years, someone will come back and say, hey, that data science thing, what did it actually bring us in revenues, in top line, in bottom line? And therefore, I always to keep this up as a reminder for ourselves or for myself and for my team in terms of, okay, why are we doing this? And how can we also make that count in terms of um, people understand what it is? You might have noticed in my responsibility, um, when I first took this job, I'm with Daimler AG only for about 18 months. In the meantime, I was in management consulting before that. And they told me there was a position for a head of analytics slash big data. And I was like, I'm interested, but we need to talk about the name because first we have to talk about data and then about analytics. And the second one is big data is a bit tricky uh, in terms of definition. So I have one from a colleague I like very much. He came to me and he told me, we have a big data case. The data doesn't fit Excel anymore. I'm saying, yeah, fine. <laughs> Let's do this. Let's not waste time on definitions or things. If that is your understanding, that's fine with me. I think we can handle it. Um, but when we talk about data, I'd like to think of it as data management, data engineering, data governance, uh, data quality, data stewardship. So all of these things need to be tackled separately or they are, let's say, the foundation and need to be addressed properly so you can focus on actually doing analytics on them. And when it comes to analytics, of course, we've got always people ask me, oh, you're only doing analytics, not advanced analytics? I say, yeah, sure, definition again philosophy. So call it advanced, call it predictive, call it prescriptive. I always tell the people as soon as we get something out of the data, we don't have to get into too much detail if that's a fancy machine learning algorithm and I stacked it in terms or if it's just a traditional time series model from statistics, it needs to get the job done. Therefore I said, okay, let's keep focus on these two things. We've got data, we've got analytics. Both of them are intertwined and connected to each other, but each of them also has its own needs to be focused on separately. So when it comes to the whole topic of data and analytics, yeah, the 80-20 rule, uh, Pareto. So that is what everybody tells you. That is how it is at our place, how people do, how it work. So um, I might be exaggerating just a little tweeny tiny bit, but in my personal perception, it's like this, at least at our place. Um, as I said, I might be exaggerating just to get a source of, uh, so, um, sense of urgency also to my bosses in terms. We need to invest also on the data side, not only in the fine, fancy, shiny machine learning AI topics, but also in, let's say, rather dull topics of data governance, data management, data lakes instead of data swamps, and so on. And um, yeah, you need to have ambition. 
also. So what we are aiming to and what we are working on is to get to parity in terms of we've got our data sources and our data um, handled so well that people actually can, when they get a use case or they have an idea and they want to validate things, that they can actually use half of the time understanding the data that is there, that is available, that is transparent, what is, can be used and that is documented, and then use half of the time actually getting insights, combining data with other sources and so on. So, yeah, not there yet, but that is what we do. As of my responsibility, when people ask me, so you've got data scientists, you've got data analysts, you've got data engineers, what are you doing? I say, yeah, that's fine, we do have them, we do that. But we also see, let's say, on a more metaphorical role, other responsibilities for us in the organization. So what, what I would also always like us to see, or my team to be, is enabling other people also to use data in terms of uh, that we deliver the surrounding, that we deliver the setting, that people can have methods, that they have tools, that they have processes that make them um, able to use high quality data for that. Technology, of course, is a big, big part of that. Um, and I'm a big fan of um, self-service in terms of bringing people platforms that they can, they can leverage. So in my domain in finance, uh, which is very, very data savvy domain, people work like 90% in Excel because that is what they are given, what works. All other tools like, for example, uh, come with some old BI systems, for example. Yeah, somehow it works, but it's not as, it's not getting the job done. So what I actually, I have one colleague who's a uh, crack in Atorix. So what his main specialty is, he takes SAP BW BAX reports that export it to Excel, which is a uh, human readable format. And then he transforms it into a machine readable format. And I'm like, that is very helpful. I know that people love you for that, but why are you doing this? Because we have this information in a machine readable format. We're transforming it to a human readable format, not a nice one, but nevertheless human readable. And then you take it again, the human readable format, and transform it back to a machine readable format. Something doesn't add up in that. So that is the, why I say we need to have platforms where people can actually access data and make data usable for their usage. Um, my responsibility or us, uh, our team is also some kind of consulting. I was in management consulting for 13 years, so somehow, somehow the word consulting also made it up to the slides because um, I truly believe people need to be enabled and need to be also educated and um, also need a bit more of support in terms of uh, understanding what the actual potential of this whole data analytic things are. And that is why I see my team also as a support in terms of identifying, building, and operating such solutions. Um, what's also very important for me is that it's not an ivory tower in terms of people go on a pilgrimage, they bring their data, and then they get a solution back if, uh, um, if they are allowed to. But it's rather like coaching and training. So whenever someone in the organization worldwide says, yeah, we think about hiring a data scientist, I say, highly welcome because then I have someone on the other side I can talk to at eye level on the same language. So it doesn't, my, our priority is not to bundle all data scientists in one place, in one central responsibility. That's, let's say, the old corporate way, but rather to have them disparate. That is the idea behind immersive in terms of the more people I have who are knowledgeable about our topics in the business, on the ground, where the problems actually happen, the better we will become to spread also let's say, the knowledge, the technology, and also the, the benefits of the technology or the models behind that. And last but not least, the religious part. Um, yeah, preaching and speaking for the topics, why data is very important and very happy also that um, we did that from the very beginning when I started at Daimler. And I'm cautiously confident and optimistic uh, that uh, slowly it is heard and even resonated by our top management. So how do we approach um, problems or ideas that come into place? Rather, yeah, I think that's not rocket science. I think a lot of you will also be doing it in a similar way. Um, people show up with ideas or we have idea contests. We now have a competition going on for the 100 million idea. It doesn't matter if it's 100 million dollar or if it's 100 million uh, users or 100 million um, customers. Whatever, it's just the slogan is 100 million. And we get dozens and tons of ideas coming out of that. 
And then, of course, someone has to evaluate in terms, okay, what's in it? What's in it for the company? What's in it for you? Who is the beneficiary of this actual use case or this actual idea? And this is something where I say, okay, we need to get down to um, getting a grip on that value because currently the whole topic of data and analytics is so fancy. Everybody wants to do it. And that is also a bit of a risk being a cost center. So you are there. You are no extra charge. So uh, people, I tend to call them popcorn customers, internal customers. So they come by, they have this idea, they supply you data rather slow, not directly, and, res um, and respond to your uh, requests in terms of understanding the data. But then when you have, let's say, a first solution after a sprint or two, they sit there with a popcorn and say, ah, oh, no, that's not really it. That's not what I thought. No, no, it's not so helpful. Uh, we do that uh, a different way. So, People need to have a skin in the game. So that's the reason why in the evaluation, we also need some kind of indication for the value. So what's in for the company? Who's the beneficiary? Is it efficiency? Is it top line? Is it bottom line? Is it uh, just relieving people of pain of manual uh, preparations, for example, which is definitely also a value a lot to many people. Um, just an indication, just an idea, just a number in terms of, okay, I believe, and we check if it's plausible, if we believe, okay, if we share that indication, and if so, we build a proof of concept in ideally six to eight weeks' time. And when we have a minimum viable product in terms of a proof of concept that is for one plant, that is for one country, that is for one um, sales point or whatever, then we review that indication and try to find out, okay, does it scale? And um, if so, is it worth it to professionalize the solution, to bring it into operations on a global scale or at least on a countrywide scale? And if so, what is the necessary invest? And at that point is exactly where I want or I need a VP's or senior VP's um, commitment that we will reap these benefits because it's not my department. We only supply the solution. But changing the processes, doing things differently, um, applying a pricing recommendation that the algorithm did, for example, that is up to the business side, that is to the people who are responsible for the processes. But before we build things, we try to get their commitment. Yes, if you bring me the solution, I will, then we will also change the things we do business. And then professionalizing, building the solutions, rolling them out, which is on a global scale with Daimler always a bit of a hassle because markets are also very, very different. Our business models in the US is different from the business model in China, significantly so, and different from the ones in um, Europe and so on. So that's always a bit of a challenge, the, um, the latter part, but also yeah, a fun part. Um, when it comes to our setup, how we, how we um, set it all up, it's um, our business model um, has three different, oh, I differentiate between three different layers. I say, okay, there are things we need to handle in terms of a framework as enablers that need to be done once and then, or not once, they need to be established once and then they need to be continuously refined and updated. That is for topics of governance, that is the topic of communi uh, community in terms of people involved in, in our topics, and also the topic of strategy. Um, I quickly switch to the lower part, which is also very important in terms of our foundation, our infrastructure, technological platforms. These are the tools people are actually using. But the fun part, of course, is always in the core value chain in terms of where we are actually identifying what we want to do, building that, deploying it, and operating it. And um, that is also always done with different profiles. So what we um, very much like to do or try to do is in a very early phase in, term, in terms of design thinking, or to have already have a mock-up. Uh, my data engineers and my data scientists are always like, okay, I understood the problem, give me the data. I say, no, we most definitely did not understand the problem after two hours of workshop or two hours of meeting. Um, we need to dig deeper. We need to understand who the actual customer in terms of user of that solution will be. Often enough I hear, yeah, that would be the colleague the next, the next department, uh, uh, the next door. I say, okay, why is that guy not here with us on the table? Why are you sitting here? Yeah, I know his requirements. <laughs> why? Why is he not on that table? That is the discussion I have fairly often. Um, and then it comes to, let's say, data engineering, data plumbing, which is uh, something, as it is, takes so much time and is so, uh, let's say, in all of these legacy systems, so hard uh, work, I have very, very much respect for. So this is the real tough part in a lot of our projects. 
uh, where the data scientists, let's say, who focus more on the analytical models, um, identifying or trying different things, statistics versus machine learning versus deep learning. Um, I always make jokes about, guys, you have the fun part. So the data prep part is the hard work, uh, not the hard work, but it's, um, yeah, always a bit a hassle. And that translates roughly, let's say, to our organizational structure. So I have four teams in, um, under my uh, responsibility who are in data management, data science, and what we call business analytics, call it consulting. That's, that is a team of people, um, let's say, on the interface, doing project management, doing key account management with my business counterparts. And their sole responsibility is to make sure that we find the end customer, that we reach them, and that we actually, what we do, makes sense on the wrong run, long run in terms of is implemented, is used, does change business in an actual setting. And last but not least, our information design, which is currently just a team of two, um, but that is also something that I hold very dear, not in terms fancy visualization nobody has seen before, but coming from a design thinking perspective, coming from a user perspective, having an UI in terms of um, what information does the people uh, need and how is the general storytelling, how will he get down into data, how will he get down in, let's say, our forecasts, for example, or our um, predictions, how will he get down to our optimization in terms of if we do a pricing recommendation for a part. We have to explain to him why we are doing this. What are the components? Why is this part more expensive than in the past and so on? So all of these are things that we need to transform, transport in terms of um, people need to understand it and it's, data is not always speaking for itself. So the visual component is very dear to us also. And then I have two expert positions in terms of uh, one lead architect for the platforms and one lead for the whole topic of data governance who um, yeah, also plays a crucial role in the, our endeavors. So what are we doing at the very moment? Um, we are still in a ramp up phase in terms of I joined Dunder 18 months ago. So this is not, uh, let's say, uh, work in progress and the title was not having built an immersive data function but building an immersive data function which is exactly what we're currently doing and the general idea of what we are currently delivering is analytic solutions we're developing the skills in the organization also pushing uh, communicating supporting the right mindset on data um, building our community let's say people that are interested and a lot of people are interested in the topics even us not only young people who by nature are curious and still searching for, let's say, the next challenge and uh, uh, also building up their resume and their CV, but also experienced people who had the hassle working with Excel with data for 20 years and that didn't work out. And they, they start teaching themselves programming in VBA so they find some way to make sense out of these tons of data. And they are always very, very grateful and very open to new impulses and to new alternatives in terms of how they um, can actually solve their own business problems. And last but not least, what we do, of course, our platforms in terms of um, how do we get technology to the people, how do we get um, our ideas transported. So one cornerstone of that technology strategy is what we call our data and analytics workbench. We, um, DNA for short, yeah, sounds like DNA, and I actually like it. So we call, and that's why we use it as this. I say, okay, our DNA workbench is actually data IQ at the, um, at the center of it. And um, we had quite a rigid um, selection process for data IQ. I met the guys at uh, Strata Data in London uh, one and a half, uh, nearly two years ago. And uh, afterwards I said, okay, we will have to check if that is a feasible technology. And what we did is actually I put four teams, also with four external consulting companies, um, uh, onto Data Eco with four different use cases. We had um, a bunch of business users involved as it, and we did these cases. And uh, we did testing in different um, categories, loading, preparing, analyzing data, modeling data, development. And is it perfect? Not yet. We're working on that. But it's the best so far I have seen in the market. So five, five, four or five overall rating was our, our feedback. And what we also did is we did not only try it with our expert data scientists who sometimes 
I'd like to compare them to a band of Kung Fu um, uh, uh, guys because everyone has a specialty. So I've got the uh, guy with the nunchaku, the guy with the sword, the guy with the darts, and the guy with the iron fists. So each one has a specialty. I've got the guy with Alteryx, I've got the Python uh, data preparation guy, I've got the R uh, modeling guy, and I've got the uh, um, Tableau front end guy. So that is fine. In some place in the future we will have to find some common ground, and I'm also quite hap uh, happy that each one of my Kung Fu fighters uh, can use Data Equal in some way and finds himself again in that platform. So that is very also one part of the collaborative story I very much uh, uh, value. And, um, but we also checked with a lot of people in the organization. So we invited people and said, hey, we have a two days training for free. You just have to come to Stuttgart which is quite, is for the US colleagues, sometimes is a bit problematic. But just come to Stuttgart, two days, we give you a crash course in general what data analytics is all about. We show you what we call the data analytics workbench, and then we have one day with a Kaggle case for used car pricing or for used car uh, evaluation, and you uh, team up in teams of two, and you run this case. And we have a leaderboard, um, you can upload your predictions, we have a hidden data set in the background. So nobody's gonna be a data scientist after that in two days. But one of my colleagues uh, in senior management once told me, um, you know, this whole thing is voodoo. I said, not really, it's based on mathematics. I know that might, can feel like uh, voodoo sometimes, but it isn't. And that is exactly what we're trying to do here. We're trying to lower the threshold to give people an understanding what is possible. So on two levels, you have, if this is the entry threshold, and you have, oops, if that is the entry threshold and that is the skill level, what we try to do is to lower the entry threshold by using tools for like Data Eagle, for example, and we try to up the game in terms of training people so it clicks at one certain point of time and people are able to use the platform and also are able to participate and, uh, and bring themselves in into the process. Another thing we're working on, you've seen the, maybe you've seen already the uh, Microsoft Service Hubs outside. So, working in a group. So that is a general story I always like to tell with the studio. It's a DNA studio, it's like a music studio. So a music studio is a place full, packed full with technology, but it's not about technology. It's about the creative process, it's about the song that comes out. Nobody talks about the studio afterwards, everybody talks about the music that comes out. And I wanted to have a place exactly the same for data and for analytics. I want a place packed full with technology, because I'm a geek, but that's not about technology, it's about insights, it's about working with data, about finding out what is happening with data. And there are even some rumors that my wife says I can't have a bigger TV at home, that therefore I had to get one at work. They are only partly true. But we've got 240 inch in the meantime, <laughs> which is a system uh, consisting of uh, three uh, overhead projectors. Um, they've got pens with cameras in it, so I have six meters. Um, and, uh, and European uh, sizing 240 inch screen overall, a meeting room where people can work. We have um, two cameras if people need to uh, be involved um, with a Skype conference. We've got the microphones on the ceiling, so the quality is also good, so that we can actually work as a team on data altogether. So that is also one piece of the puzzle. And the next one we are uh, working on for 2018 is what I call a marketplace. Because one of the big slogans in our organization and everywhere is data is the new oil. And I was like, yeah, sure, but where's the refinery? How do we get gas out of it? Where's the marketplace where I can trade it? What's the current price for data? And so on. So people tell me, yeah, sure, I don't know. <laughs> So I said, okay, what we actually need is some kind of system where people can find data for the use cases, and I like to call it a marketplace. And I, yeah, I, I wouldn't say that Kaggle stole my idea, but they maybe had it in parallel. Um, so uh, I was telling the story, telling the story, and then Kaggle came up with the uh, data sets with open data. And that is exactly what I'm envisioning also in a certain degree to, in a business environment, in terms of today a data scientist needs to pick up a phone and call a dozen people what data is available, um, where it comes from, uh, what's the lineage, what is the original source, what's the enrichment in the systems beyond, and so on. And I would like to have a system one day where people uh, actually can find data that is beneficial to the case that they can actually use. And I'd go even a step further, and that is also what Kaggle did in terms of kernels. I want the code using or that data to be available to the organization also, so that um, also a data owner has transparency, he was using his data for what ends, 
And on the other side, um, people know, okay, there is a model I can fork directly, technically, so I can reuse information. Currently, it's just, uh, let's say, it's a black market, if you want to. It's a model and data black market in the organization. So yeah, everybody knows there is something. And if you've got the right connections, you will get it also. Um, depending on your connections, you will get it earlier or later or not even at all. And that is also one thing that is very dear to me, the whole topic of mindset, the whole topic of data culture. And I was quite lucky that um, just five months into the company, I was invited for um, a strategy team meeting from our, uh, from our CFO and 20 of his direct reports. And um, he said, yeah, listen, I know this whole thing of connected finance, data culture is an important thing. They've got a colleague from IT on that topic. And I teamed up with him and we presented, let's say, some kind of a roadmap, a general idea to our top management, what we think it would take end to end uh, from data, beginning at the very, very beginning in terms of where data comes into existence, where data is collected, where data is generated. There it starts. Push down principle in terms of data quality begins at the very, very beginning, or it starts at the very beginning. And, but going through all of these um, phases and terms until actually we use it to co-create sustainable solutions. So, as I said, it's an ongoing journey. Lessons learned so far. Um, I did a few things, I think, a different way than Daimler did in the last 130 years. Um, sometimes, um, yeah, that it's not, not always easy, but I think uh, speed is of the essence. So I would do it again every day. Other thing is um, convince with good solutions. So we have uh, some colleagues in IT who have uh, on technology components a sticker mandatory service. As soon as I see the sticker mandatory service, I run as fast as I can. Because mandatory service in my world, or at least in my personal experience, means, okay, that service is not good enough that it, uh, um, that it sells for itself. So someone had to put a political sticker on it in terms of, okay, you have to use it. Someone says, you have to use it. I'm like, ah, okay, we need to talk about that a bit more to you. And last but not least, build and leverage the diverse internal and external networks. So uh, yeah, it helps to be in the organization a bit longer than 18 months, um, but I'm slowly also starting to have, let's say, critical mass to implement these ideas and also external in terms of, for example, like these. So go out, speak at ACT 2018 is my recommendation. Um, that is always helpful for exchange, for new ideas, for impulses, and even to improving things like these. So, what can I say 18 months into it? Uh, Daimler is definitely a large company, uh, 280,000 employees worldwide. It's an old company, 130 years. For startup like Daka Eco, it must feel like ancient. And um, Daka Eco got, got a bird. Um, I think depicting, let's say, an, an analogy for that would be rather something like a dinosaur. But this dinosaur has me, and I like to see me as a jetpack engineer, in terms of, yeah, we're building a dinosaur with jetpack. Let's see what's come out of that. Thank you. Yeah.